So in discussing the general treatment course from patients with uh, acute myeloid leukemia, one of the first decisions that is made by the provider is, unfortunately, it's quite subjective, but this, this is whether a patient is quote unquote eligible or appropriate to receive intensive therapy, which really since 1973 has really been the backbone of treatment. Uh, we do know that there are some population of patients that can still derive benefit from less intensive therapies, um, which kind of segues into the second sort of aspect of treatment decision making, which is what is the disease biology? Um, um, there are some molecular and cytogenetic subsets which warrant definitive standard of care therapies based on randomized phase three clinical trials um, to support that one regimen is better than the other. Um, we're trying to find a way to really merge these two. Another classic example is where you know maybe intensive therapy might not be as appropriate as for the patient with extremely poor risk disease like tp 3 mutated disease as we discussed previously, um, for which maybe less intensive therapy might still offer some benefit but not as much toxicity that we generally think we see more of with um, more with with the intensive therapies. Mutations in FLT3, IDH1, IDH2 um, can change the decision making process a little bit because we do have available uh, molecular targeted agents uh, uh, for this uh, specific uh, population of patients um, and you know we have seen some improvement in outcomes with, with these patients. These tend to be uh, intensive therapy uh, inappropriate or ineligible patients um, and they usually get either some monotherapies or less intensive combat combinations. Uh, the third decision, and you know, the, this is a, a decision which is usually made at the outset of starting or you know, really formulating that, that induction plan, is whether a patient is uh, appropriate for an allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplant, which for many patients is essentially the only real prospect of cure, outside of there are favorable slash good risk misnomer subsets of disease that can just get by with chemo consolidation, but transplant, uh, donor transplant specifically, um, really puts patients in the best position to really garner long-term survival. But it comes with complications and you know patients have to accept some unique risks with this with the strategy.